Okay, uh, so uh, thank you very much for taking the time to come and uh, listen to us. We are here to present uh, how we have worked to be able to create a truly carbon negative data center. And uh, we're a Norwegian co-location company, which Tor Christian is going to uh, go a little bit more into details on. And I also urge you to, uh, to uh, listen to the presentation, because if you, get, you can answer a couple of questions right at the end, you get some really, really good Norwegian chocolate. So it's a test at the end, okay? Uh, yeah, my name is Svein, I'm Chief Sales Officer of Green Mountain. And with me, I have Tor Christian Garland, the CEO of Green Mountain. And Thank you, Thank you Sven Atle. And uh, pleasure being here. Uh, it's two years since I last was in, in, uh, in the States, so, so I'm really delighted to be able to, to come back. And, and talk a little bit more about uh, what we have uh, to offer out of our three Norwegian uh, locations. Uh, Green Mountain is, uh, is a company that's been in operation for 10 years and is a leading uh, provider in the Nordic market. And we're also the first Nordic company that was uh, OCP certified. Uh, and quite a large of, uh, portion of our um, of business is today AI and HPC uh, compute. We're operating three data centers out of, uh, of Norway on the west coast and in Oslo and, in, and one, one in between, where each of those has its, its, its purpose. Uh, but what, I'm, what we're talking about here today is how we have adapted or trying to meet the sustainability goals that we see are being more and more focused in, uh, in, in the business. First of all, Norway is an ideal country for your data center. We're a little bit up north in Europe, meaning that the climate is in a way that we're able to do free cooling the whole year around, uh, reducing the cost of electricity for, for, for cooling. Uh, all the power in Norway is green and renewable, all delivered with uh, hydro, and there is a surplus of power in Norway. Norway is today exporting approximately 20% of the power produced, and there is more power being built, so that looking, looking ahead for the next decade, there will be, continue to be a surplus of power. And if you combine that with uh, the cold climate and, and the green, uh, the green electricity, the energy efficiency is of the best in the business, all delivered with green and renewable power and at the lowest cost in Europe. So Atle will talk a little bit more about that uh, later on. But that's not enough to be sustainable. What we have said is that we are delivering carbon negative solutions out of our data center. And our ambition with our data center is to, to build a truly circular economy where we see the use of data center in combination with hydrophonic farming, biogas plant, onshore fish farming, and also district heating, where we're able to reuse, let's say, the waste out of each of these elements as an opportunity for, for some of those other ones. So what we have done in uh, two of our data centers is that we're currently, uh, they're currently being built uh, two onshore fish farms. Uh, in our Stav Stavanger data center, it will be a lobster farm where we will, uh, or that company will, will produce uh, uh, plate-sized lobsters. Uh, and the ideal temperature for an onshore lobster farm is 20 degrees. Meaning that the, the let's say, the low-grade heat you normally get out of the data center can be used without adding additional energy. So in, in, uh, in uh, that data center, they will produce 900 tons of lobster annually. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a product that's currently not being farmed. So it's, it's quite a, 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 an, a, an innovation both from the lobster part and also from, from the data center. On our second data center, uh, Hema Seafood are, have started to build an onshore trout farm uh, where they will produce 9,000 tons of trout a year. That 
is equal to 1.5 million dinners a year, all being heated from our data center. Uh, on the trout farm, there's access to fresh and, and, and cold water. So during the winter, we're heating up the water, but we also were working together with them on, on, on some of those warm summer days where we will also cool the water for the, uh, the trout farm. So these are two really innovative sustainability projects and is, uh, is a part of the delivery we have with carbon negative uh, data centers. And uh, this actually leads to kind of the calculation of uh, how we're delivering carbon negative. Uh, of course, the footprint of even running on 100% renewables still has a, a carbon footprint. In Norway, the average carbon footprint of the energy that we use is 24 grams. Uh, while, for instance, uh, Germany, which we are comparing here, are you, have a, a carbon footprint of 441. Um, so it's a quite a significant dif uh, difference. And this is why we see a lot of movement in Europe now into looking at where can we actually achieve green deliverable 24-7. Uh, so this is a, a CO2 comparison that I did for a German client uh, of a three megawatt data center where their current energy consumption at a, at a average uh, level for them was 1.7 in PUE. We could deliver that same one for 1.15, so it's a significant improvement just in the use of energy there. And then, uh, as you can see in these two different, the, num the number of household equivalents by saving by having a three megawatt data center in Norway compared to Germany was around five and a half thousand households. In addition to that, and that's just on the energy side itself, moving a data center from Germany to Norway. Uh, the additional savings through using this heat reuse is a little bit more of a complex calculation. I'm more than happy to, uh, to spend five minutes on that afterwards. But in, uh, in general, uh, we looked at how can we kind of do that house, household equivalent also on the carbon negativity and then calculate backwards into what it actually means of C CO2. So by implementing the amount of energy that we're going to use for this trout farm, that's equivalent to 2,800 households. So a total of eight and a half thousand households, which in Norway, which is a scarcely populated uh, country, uh, means that it's a, it's a medium sized Norwegian city actually. Um, so, and the equivalent of that is around three and a half million uh, kilos of CO2. I don't know a pound uh, calculation, but probably somebody who's better at doing that in the head but around three and a half million tons of, of CO2 uh, 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 annually. Uh, and then back to the cost. In addition to that ability to deliver carbon negative, we can also deliver it at a cost, a, a very, very efficient cost point. So a lot of the discussions that I have with clients is now we, we cannot do it because it costs too much. Here you can actually do a, a double header or double whammy or whatever it's called in the US and both go sustainable. But you can do that while you're also saving a significant amount of, uh, of money. So if you look at the power cost of Germany, for instance, which is at 17.8 versus what we can deliver from our data centers at 3.2 cents. And this is a fixed price contract to some of our clients at 3.2 cents. And if you look at Germany now, now at, at the UK, for instance, we now have poor, uh, power shortages. That's actually two and a half thousand times more expensive for energy now in the, the UK compared to Norway. So why should you build your data centers in London when you can get it cheaper and more sustainable out of Norway? And that leads me to the last slide. And, uh, and also here you can see Norway is truly the only country in Europe who actually have 100% renewable energy and we have that 24-7. So if you look at the hyperscale's ambition of being carbon negative by 2030, we can make sure that we get our clients there today. And this is actually what it means in uh, real money. If you look at the white uh, row, you see the actual comparison of that three megawatt data center, what you save 
by putting it in Norway versus putting it somewhere else. On average, on that three megawatt facility over 10 years, you save more than $50 million by moving it to Norway. So a significant opportunity is to save money and also make sure that you reach your carbon negative goals already today. Um, I think that's uh, the last slide actually. So uh, we have f four more minutes and that's for our, uh, our competition and questions. Should we do questions first? Anyone have questions? None? Okay, then we'll do the, the quiz. Four Norwegian chocolates. So the only thing you need to do is to drive and buy flowers to your partner, male, female, whatever, on the way home, and you will be, have a very, very uh, satisfied uh, guy. This is fantastic. So um, how many tons of CO2 do you save annually by moving a three megawatt data center to Norway? The carbon negative number. What? You said? Oh, 3.5. That was the first one. And then the last one, how much money do you average save by moving that three megawatt data center from the flap day to Norway? I have to have a raise hands here. Yep, in the back there. No, next, yeah. That's fantastic, <laughs> you can see it there. <laughs> you should take that away. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, it was a pleasure. We will be on the sidelines here if there's anybody who would like to ask some additional questions. But if you're really looking for carbon negative data centers, regardless of where it is, look to Norway. Thank you. Thank you.